We ready? Okay. I usually have a foot hanging out the window. I'm John Francis, firefighter with the Overland Park Fire Department. I became a firefighter with the Overland Park Fire Department uh, back in 1983 in the fall. And I did that because in the, my early years in the restaurant business with the family, uh, we had Chief Bob Wilcox, Jim Brookard, and my dad that were all involved in the fire service. And uh, it was something that I wanted to pursue. I grew up with those guys leaving the restaurant, going on calls, uh, and got to know the Brookard family very well back in those days and the Wilcox family. Uh, my dad was a, uh, a member of the department for many years back in the 70s. Uh, he was on the executive board. He was a volunteer assistant chief. Uh, so there was uh, a lot of years of fire service in the Francis household, a lot. Started in Overland Park, volunteer, kind of I think late fall of 83. Uh, some of those records may be disputed because of a, maybe a cave fire, but uh, and then I became paid in uh, I think January of 88, 1988. Started at Station One, right here where I am today, uh, with uh, Captain Cordell as my first captain. Oh, that shift was, that shift was unbelievable. Captain Cordell, Lieutenant Johnny Myers, uh, George A. Singer, Greg Lewis, uh, just a bunch of great guys. I can't even remember half of them that came and went. Uh, we always, always were training way back before training center days. We'd go out in the street, go out on the road, and just impromptu do things, pull hose, drop bundles, set up a articulating boom on old 451, do different things like that, and just always had fun. And we had a lot of fires. I get commentary today from some of the crews because they can't believe we go on a medical call and drive down one of these streets up here, and I say, we burnt that house, we burnt that house, I was on that house fire, and they just can't believe how many fires we had up here in this area but that was commonplace that we had a house fire almost every week back in those days, in the late 80s and, early, and uh, mid 80s. It was not uncommon when I was growing up to go to 15 house fires with my dad in two days over the 4th of July, where every house would just burn the roof off, they would leave a supply line hooked to the hydrant with a gate valve with an inch and a half on it, and they would leave two guys there with no truck and just use static water off the hydrant and go to the next fire. That's how many fires they would have during 4th of July. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a true thing, true deal. seen a lot of changes. Uh, I've been through a lot of changes, more than most people would realize. Starting as a volunteer, and then I became very involved with the volunteer organization. I worked my way up into the executive board. At one time, I was the president of the executive board, and the executive board ran the Overland Park Fire Department Incorporated. After all that, then I got hired. Uh, and went through the whole thing and actually even did 15 month rotation in the prevention division, uh, which very few people left today would even know what that meant. But um, so yeah, I've seen a lot of changes. Obviously the biggest change is the medical portion of this whole thing is we just don't have the fires anymore. And so we've got some of the best EMTs and paramedics and fire medics in the the whole Midwest that are working here today. Um, and that's important because that's 80% of our job. 
I've had some great guys over the years that taught me a lot about firefighting. Al Dedrick, Jim McGee, Mike Casey, Jim Deneen, some of those guys like that. And today, we rely on guys like Mike Morgan and Jason Green and things like, and guys like that, Keith Jeffrey, Dustin Evinger, Brad Powell, guys on the street that are doing a great job with the uh, emergency medicine stuff. And that's an important role. Yeah, the culture's changed quite a bit. Obviously, we're a bigger department. We can't have the level of fun like we used to have. Um, it's more professional. We were professional then, but you could get away with a lot of things 25 or 30 years ago that you wouldn't even consider doing today. There might have been a flower cannon incident where a cannon was made filled with flour. Uh, there, there was a battalion chief that used to throw uh, maybe a firecracker underneath the truck with you when you were changing the oil to see if you were awake. Uh, some of those things, I'll, I'll never forget some of those. It, it's, it's times have changed in general across the country. So other than that, you know, it's a good job and you can have fun, but you just have to know what side of the line to stay on. I've gotten so many stories from fire calls that we've been on that were both good or bad, EMS calls that were good or bad. I, I couldn't even, I try not to just dwell on any of them, but it is, it is nice when you do have that code save that comes into the fire station two or three weeks later and thanks you in person. My advice for today's up and coming firefighter, fire medic, paramedic is always try to learn something new every single day. I've been a student of this service for 34 years. It's, I never quit trying to learn something. Yeah, there's days where we put our feet up and we don't do much. Try to learn something every day as much as you can. Keep it fresh in your mind and stay motivated and, and, and in the game. Uh, you can get so far behind pretty quick if you quit the training and give up on studying stuff and looking at the trucks and going through the compartments and learning your customers that you have in your area is another big thing that, that uh, plays a big role in that. Staying engaged is half the battle, especially today when it's not unusual where we might run 15 or 20 calls out of this station in one shift. And if you do that two or three days in a row, exhaustion kind of starts setting in. So you may not have a whole lot of time to train, but if you can make the best of it, and I'll go old school because it's easy to make the best of it at the kitchen table, having that tabletop 15 minute discussion about a call, about a fire, about road construction, about how the truck works, getting back to some of the old ways that we used to do our training at the table is really helpful information for everybody. And that'll help you kind of, that, if that's easy to stay motivated to come up with a 15 or 20 minute topic every day to talk about. I'm not sure I'm, I'm ready, but I'm not sure I'm ready. I, I guess it'll all set in uh, at uh, August the 9th at eight o'clock in the morning. When I walk out the back door and put some stuff in the dumpster and get in my truck and drive away, it's all gonna set in. I've been preparing for this day for quite a while. There's a lot of preparation that goes into this. You know, Captain Bischoff is a stick, stickler about 
making sure you sign up for that 457 plan. Well, he didn't have to tell me because I've done that since day one. But even if you can put $25 a paycheck in there, that's going to help your retirement package at the end during your career. So plan ahead. That's going to be very important. I'm going to miss getting up in the morning and driving down 75th Street to come to work. I'm going to miss going on calls. I'm going to miss interacting with everybody, all the shift people, seeing people. I will enjoy sleeping in my own bed and not having to get up three or four times. That's going to be nice. My wife and I will probably go on a couple little short trips. Basically, I'm going to tag along on some of her business trips. Uh, for me, I'm just going to keep grinding it out. The hunting season will be here before you know it. I've got lots of customers coming in town, but uh, I am looking forward to next year about this time. I'll be, I'll be in Bolivia for about seven or eight days with 20 people that I'm hosting a uh, group hunt. And then I come back for a week and I'll fly into Canada for a fishing trip. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I guess I think we covered everything I had written down plus some. So no, no crying, no, no crying, no crying allowed in firefighting. Megan might cry. <laughs> <laughs>